to Ophia's Open Class. My name is Andrea Hayfley and I'm an Ophia Ambassador and I'd like to welcome you my assistant, PD. Today is week four, lesson four out of four. The title of today's lesson is called Playing Traditional Target Games. Before we get started, let's go over the safety requirements. Number one, Make sure the space where today's movement is to take place is large enough for the number of learners. So if there is only one learner, you don't need a lot of space. However, if there is more than one learner, make sure the space is a little bit larger. Number two, make sure the space is free of obstacles. So what I've done is I've moved away all my furniture so that there's nothing to bump into. Number three, if you are taking this game indoors, make sure the floor where you are playing is non-slip. So in our home, what we do is we take off our socks. If you're going to take this game outside, please make sure you wear your running shoes. Let's get started. We are learning to apply skills, concepts, and strategies when playing target games alone and or with others to try to be successful and most importantly, having fun. Target games are games in which the learner propels an object with a high degree of accuracy at the target. So over the last few weeks, we've been playing games to develop our skills, concepts and strategies to transfer in a variety of target games. Get ready, primary learners. This game is adapted from Ophia's play sport resource called Knockdown. The focus is transferring skills of aim and accuracy to adapted forms of target games, such as bocce ball, golf, or wheelchair curling. Today's game is adapted from a game called bowling, okay? So here's what you need to play this game. Look around your home for three objects that you can roll, slide, or glide. You can use a ball, a stuffed animal, and what I've done is I've created my own bean bag by placing a bunch of lentils into a zipped bag. Then you'll need to find some targets as bowling pins. So what I've done is I've taken some water bottles and emptied half of the water out. What you'll need is six water bottles or something to create six bowling pins. Then you need to look around your home for some materials to create the playing area. Here's how you set it up. You're going to place the bowling pins into a triangle formation at one end of the playing area. Then you're going to take the rolled up towels or even tape to create the sides of the bowling alley, the bowling lane. And what I've done is I used up my rolled up towels. At the end over here where the X's are is where I will be standing to send the object. Okay, here's how we play alone. He is going to take the three objects and stand at one end of the bowling lane. When he's ready, he's going to send each object one at a time to attempt to knock the bowling pins down. If he's successful at the first attempt and knocks all the six bowling pins down, that is called a strike. In his first attempt, if he's only able to knock down a few of the bowling pins, and then in his second attempt, he knocks down the rest of the bowling pins, that's called a spare. But do not worry. If you need more than two tries, go for it. Here's how you play. He's gonna roll his ball. He knocked down one bowling pin. He's gonna try his beat bag. Oh, he knocked down two more. He has three more left. Let's go, Petey. Awesome, let's give him a big hand. Here are your look fors for today's game. I can look where I will send the object to the target. I can aim where I'll be sending the object to the target. I can apply a controlled force when sending the object toward a target. And I can try my best while having fun. Here's how you play with another learner. What you will do is you will take turns sending the object towards the bowling pin. So let's try playing together. Petey's going to go first. And he's going to send all three objects at his turn. So that's one. He knocked down one. 
two, knock down two, third try, all the way up, almost all of them. We'll set it up again, and then I will try. Can you get the object? Thank you. Set it up back into a triangle. My turn, let's see how mommy does. I'm gonna try my underhand throw. First one, be back. Oh, knock them all except one, here we go. Oh. In two tries, I was able to knock them all down. I got a spare. Here are the extensions to the game. Increase or decrease the distance from the target and where you are throwing. Number two, try experimenting with different objects that you are sending. Here's a game for our junior learners. It is adapted from Ophia's Play Sport resource called Beanbag Bocce. The focus is on transferring game tactics to adapted forms of traditional target games such as golf, bowling, or curling. This game is adapted from a sport called Bocce Ball. Here's the equipment you will need. Look around your home for two objects per learner. So if you are one learner, you're gonna look for two objects that are similar or the same. I found two red pairs of rolled up socks. If you're playing with another learner, I found another two pairs of rolled up socks that are the color black. Then you're gonna look for an object for a, as a target. This is my target, Mr. Bear. Then you're going to need some materials such as string, rope, tape, or even a rolled up towel to create a playing unit. Okay? Here's how you set it up. You're going to use the rolled up towel or tape to create a rectangular area. I left one end open so you can see. And what you're going to do when you're playing alone is you're going to take your target and you're gonna look the opposite way to send the target over your head. Let's take a look. The playing area is in front of me. I'm gonna turn the opposite way. I'm gonna send the object over my head. And that's gonna be marked as my target. In the game of bocce ball, the target is called the Polino. And the objective of the game is to send your objects as close as possible to the Polino. In this adapted game, when you're playing alone, you're gonna send the object by sliding it, rolling it, or gliding it across the floor ground with your feet. Check it out. My first object is the sock. I'm gonna put my foot over it and see if I can slide it across the playing area as close as I can to the Polina, which is Mr. Bear. Oh, yes, I hit the target. I'm gonna take my second object, put my foot on it, See if I can give it a nice slide. Oh, too hard. So, as you can see behind me, my first red rolled up sock got really close to the target. That's one point for me. Here are your look force for this game. I can apply a controlled force when sending the object as close as possible to the target. I can throw for distance and accuracy, and I can create a plan to increase my chances of success. Check it out, here's how you play with another learner. Petey is going to take his two black objects, I'm going to take my two red objects, and here's how we're going to start the game. To decide whose goes first, we're going to play a quick game of rock, paper, and scissors. Whoever the champion is gets to send the Polina. Ready, Petey? Hey, stand up. Ready. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Petey wins. He gets to turn the other way, sending the Polina over his head. Oh, just out of bounds. Try it again. Ready? Okay, that's a little bit too close. Try it again. We're going to try it at a bigger distance. There we go. Okay. We're going to try sliding it with our foot. He's going to put his foot on it. And when he's ready, he's going to give it a nice slide. Right at the target. Here's a trick when you're playing with another learner. I can knock his object out of the way. Let's see if I can do that. I'm going to put my foot on my red sock. I'm going to 
Let's see if I can slide his black sock out of the way. So close. Ready? Yeah. He's still the closest to the Polino. On, oh, two for two. So, my last object, I'm gonna see if I can knock his two socks out of the way. Here we go. Ready? Oh, so close. So right now, he won because his two objects were the closest to the Polino, okay? So, to score this with two learners after all the objects are sent, the learner with the closest object to the Polino gets one point. On top of that, that learner also receives an extra point for every object between the Polino and the other learner's object. So, I drew a picture here to show you. This is Petey's object, and here is Petey's object. Here is Mummy's object, and here is Mummy's object. The target is the Polino, the X. If you are scoring this right now, the champion, uh, the winner, is Petey. And his object right here is the closest to the Polino. That's one point. His second object is also between my object and the Polino. So he actually gets two points here. Okay? Here are some extensions to the game. Create a larger target to make it easier to send the object to. Or change the object you are sending. So instead of soft, what can you look for in your home that you can send? Here's the game for our intermediate learners. It is an adaptation from Ophia's PlaySport resource called Propayball. The focus is on transferring game tactics to adaptive forms of traditional target games, such as bocce ball, bowling, or golf. Here's the equipment you will need. Create a starting line from where you will be sending the object. I'm using a rolled up towel. You can use a piece of string or tape. Then you're going to look around your home for some materials to create gates. I'm using water bottles. At the end of your setup, you're going to need a target for the final part of the game. So I'm just using a larger bottle. The object I will send is a rolled up sock. You can use a ball, a stuffed toy, and then find an object that you can use as an implement to send the object. So I'm using a paddle, you can use a broom, or even a hockey stick, okay? Here's how you play the game alone. Set this back up first. P, you're gonna start at the starting line with his paddle and his object, which is his rolled up sock. Let me show him how to play. He's going to send the sock through the first gate. And the objective of the game is to see if he can send the object through the four gates in the least number of attempts before he hits the final target, okay? So, go ahead. Attempt number one, two, went through the second gate, three, four, five, six, seven. He knocked it down. Here's a visual to show you how our circuit looks. Here's the starting line, and he's going to send his object through his first gate, second gate, third gate, fourth gate, and all the way to the end. And the objective, once again, is to see if you can do this in the least number of attempts. Here are the look force. I can apply a controlled force to send the object to the target. I can throw for distance and accuracy, I can create a plan to increase my chances of success. Here's how you play with another learner. Petey and I are going to each take turns to send the object through the fourth four gates. And whoever can send the object in the least number of attempts wins. Here's how we show you. He's going to go first with his red socks. Let's count. One. Two. Starting at the starting line. One, two, 
is to alternate turns and I can even attempt to knock his object out of the way. Here's how you play. He's going to start off by sending his red sock through the gate. He's going to leave his red sock there. I'm going to try to send my black sock through the first gate. Okay, neck and neck. Our socks are close together. Very good. I'm going to try to attempt. Okay, so let me tell you what I see right now. My black sock went through the second gate. His red sock did not go through the second gate yet. He has an opportunity to knock me out of the way. Go for it. Oh, good try. Try it out and see if you can find different variations on how to extend this game. Another extension that you can do in your home is see if you can create gates by using the legs of a chair. Increase or decrease the distance between the gates. Try using your non-dominant hand. Or experiment by sending the object with different implements. So, we used a paddle. Try using a broom or even a hockey stick. Accommodations and modifications. Accommodations are adding supports to the game to help the learner be successful. Here are some examples. Try using an implement to send the object. So instead of using your hand, you can use a paddle, a broom, a hockey stick, or even using a paper plate to send the object. Another example is increasing or decreasing the distance between where you are sending the object and to the target. You can also try changing the object that you are sending. Instead of using a ball, try using a stuffed animal. Modifications are changing the expectations to the game to help the learner be successful or lowering the number of expectations. For example, instead of sending the object to the target, have the learner go to the target and dropping the object there. Or you can have them place the object on the target. Another modification is placing objects as the target. And instead of having the learner hit the target, you would have the learner collect the object from the different targets. Try it out. Here are your guiding questions for today's lesson. Number one, describe the advantages and or disadvantages for you when you are trying to block your opponent's path to the target. Number two, what do you enjoy when you are playing target games? What is challenging for you when you are playing target games? Number three, how can you adapt your sending skills to improve your ability to avoid obstacles in target games? Number four, think about your areas of strengths and areas of improvement when playing target games. How do you use your strengths to your advantage? How do you improve in areas where you have challenges? Thanks so much for joining us in Ophia's Open Class. We look forward to hearing from you in our online community using hashtag Ophia Open Class. Thank you.